This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? Today we're gonna talk more about the yoke, where the, the, the yoke wheel, yes. So behind me here, you see Tesla Model S Palladium with a yoke wheel, and then we also have a Hyundai Ioniq 6 with a conventional round steering wheel. And then, okay, so this is not the Plaid, the Plaid is uh, at Marcus place right now, but I've been using the yoke wheel in the Plaid and also in this one, the long range, for about two months now, plus minus, been on and off driving some other cars. And I will give you my input on what I think about the yoke, because now I try to get used to it, and then do I still like it? Has it become better? Or is it still bad? Well, okay, let's take the yoke for spin first and see how it is. Okay, so um, I can also show the gear shifter. So I now set it to automatic. So we'll try to figure out whether you should go forward or backwards. So if I just tap here, it will actually guess that we're gonna drive forward. So at least that works maybe 50% of the time. But here's the problem. Uh, we have roundabouts, lots of them in Europe and especially in Norway. And then when I go in the roundabout, I do this, and then the steering wheel is like this, and then I'm supposed to blink out of the roundabout, which I failed to do this time. And I complained about this uh, last video when I was, uh, I drove it only around two weeks, and it hasn't changed. I was not able to uh, work out any muscle memory to, to blink the correct way in the roundabout. And I need to again, um, repeat how you should drive in a roundabout because a roundabout uh, ideally you want to have many cars in the roundabout at the same time and you don't want people to wait if they don't have to wait right and how can you tell people where you're going you're going to use the turn signal yeah so but again for bmw drivers and audi drivers you guys can just skip this part uh, but by using turn signal you can then tell other people where you're going and then they can uh, go whatever they want to go if it applies to them, right? So let me uh, show you guys here. Okay, first I have to go over here. For example, well, this one is not too relevant since I'm just going uh, right. But there will be cases where I will go, uh, for example, I will go left in a roundabout. And then there will be people waiting for me. Uh, actually, this one here is a prime example. Let me see. Uh, well, except for, okay. That car used a turn signal. That car used a turn signal. It was a Tesla. Wow, big surprise. And by using turn signal, they will tell me that they are just taking the first exit. Then I don't have to wait for them because normally you have to yield for the traffic from the left. And then I guess over here, if I go here. But okay, at least I managed to get used to that. This one is left and this one is right. So that one didn't take too long. To, for the muscle memory to remember. But here, when I go fu full, well, now I just fail to turn it on. I can do this, of course, but it just requires me to work my brain and then sometimes also look at the steering wheel, which is not good. Uh, then you can, yeah, usually drive on the right way in the run. But here, for example, this is also a good example. If, if I blink left now, I tell cars that comes here, there is a car coming here, I'm not sure you can see it, but I blink left and the woman, okay, she's just happened to go, also wanted to go the same way, but if she wanted to go there, she could just go there because I blink left telling that I'm going to be in this inner lane and you can just use the outer lane. And then why is this important? Because we utilize the roundabout better. Now, I don't know why I need to explain basic stuff like this to you guys, but by using turn signal correctly. You see the, the truck, they use the turn signal correctly. And then it tells everyone uh, how uh, they are going to drive and then they can just drive accordingly. So yeah, that's the whole basic behind the whole roundabout thing. And then here, ideally, what you need to do is you want to blink out of the roundabout on the, uh, you want to blink out on the last exit before you exit. I don't know if that uh, is, if, if that's, uh, uh, yeah. So for example here, well, this one is also different because you cannot, you can simply not turn right here because it's, a, it's, yeah. So then you should actually blink right already before you enter roundabout. But it's the whole blinking thing. And then the point is that there are actually lots of rules about how you should use blinkers in roundabout. And according, I mean, 
depending on what situation and where you are, you might have to blink at within that. Oh, freaking crazy drivers, man! What the heck? Yeah, but here, for example, you want to blink out. Uh, uh, no, uh, here I did a little bit earlier. Here, you want to start blinking out, and that means that the steering wheel might be, or the yoke rather, the yoke wheel might be in a different position, and then uh, it becomes confusing whether you. Uh, which side you blink. Uh, for me, even after two months, I get it right roughly 50% of the time. <laughs> it's still very confusing. Uh, some people, they bought some aftermarket uh, button, something like some kind of sticker that po pokes out, some, some rubberized plastic uh, thing you put on one of the, the one that you would typically use for blinking out. And then you can actually feel, even if the if the steering wheel is upside down, you can feel it, and then you can press it. <laughs> I mean, why do we have to make such hacks for a car that should be ergonomically good in the first place, right? See, I blink left now in the roundabout, and then here I'm supposed to blink right. Okay, let me see if I got that one right. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, but you see, okay, now I really had to focus, but you can imagine if I was busy uh, talking to my wife or just trying to figure out uh, what uh, I'm supposed to eat for dinner today, then I might not get it right. So, okay, let's... Um, so that's the problem. Even after two months of driving, some driving, some not driving it, I still can't get used to it. Uh, and it's really hard because uh, the fundamental ergonomics with this car is, in my opinion, wrong. That's the problem because the, the turn signal uh, buttons or input uh, units or what the, the, the input device keeps moving. <laughs> That's the problem. That is the problem. We, once we go over to the Ionic 6, I can show you how smooth it works with Ionic 6 and of course all the other cars on the road except for the Tesla yokes. So, but there are some advantages with the with the yoke wheel, right? Yeah, there are. Okay, once we're on the motorway now or the highway, then we don't have to do much wheel movement, and then the whole turn signal stuff doesn't really matter that much. Let's see. Let me show you here. So, oh, it's, it's getting hot in here. Nice and toasty. You see here? We have some slow drivers. Okay, I blink, and then we hammer it. Oh shit! Oh damn! Okay. But here, on the motorway, then the yoke makes way more sense. Because then you don't have to do much wheel move. Okay. I don't know what the heck is wrong. Okay, what's up there? Then very little wheel movement is needed to uh, do whatever you need to do, right? Like change lane, you see? You see how little I need to move the wheel? Then it makes perfect sense. So I guess uh, as long as you live in a country that doesn't have... Uh, roundabouts and, and parking spots then no problem you can just use the yoke but for all the other cases then the yoke in my opinion becomes uh, a cumbersome a less less optimal i'm not sure how to put this so again we'll show you now typical driving scenario you drive a little bit on the motorway or a ring road or something and then you get over here and then i turn left again okay uh, traffic from the left okay you see and then, but you see that I managed to work out. Yeah, I do. I have to do the opposite of what I want to do. I have to blink left, and then it will have to blink right, <laughs> if the steering wheel, uh, the yoke wheel is upside down. But um, yeah, so I mean, what, what else should I say? It, it, it's and also I don't know. You see that I have different wheel movement now. I have different R movement because uh, my body or my brain was able to reprogram that the yoke wheel keeps changing shape based on roughly on what i do right if i turn right uh 90 degrees uh, i guess i gotten used to that it changes shape and it becomes like upright or, or vertical and then somehow my my arms do the right motion to still be able to turn the wheel but uh, from time to time when I'm a little bit stressed or uh, something, I tend to forget that and then uh, the, I tend to try to grab the imaginary wheel. So it's still not optimal. But just again to highlight that this scenario, yes, works fine and I can see the instrument cluster just fine. But however, I've also driven the Model 3 a lot 
and the Model 3 does not have an instrument cluster. Uh, it has just one screen here. And it works great because I look here and then I look here for the speed and I don't have to move my uh, eyes too much because in typical scenario you might look forward and then you, you might look down here for the speed or something and then you have to look over here for some navigation stuff and then your eyes need to keep moving all over the place but the model 3 was actually or the model y was actually quite brilliant because you only look forward and then you look here and then you see the speed and you see whatever info you want to see and then you can look at the the navigation so i actually gotten used to just having one screen it worked great so in a way, as long as you program the system to be good enough and you have good enough screen space, then you don't really need an instrument cluster. Uh, I, that was quite easy for me to work out and to get used to looking over here versus looking over here. And you know what? Some cars, they even have this speedometer, not, uh, not, uh, they, they have this speedometer roughly here. I don't remember what, what, what was it, Toyota or something? I don't remember. Was it Leaf? Or, uh, but, so you can actually get used to looking at the speedo over here and other stuff also, you know? So, so in a way, yeah, Tesla, they're trying to solve a problem that is not there, like right? with a the yoke wheel. Like they, okay, you can say, yeah, you free up some space, you can see the instrument cluster better. But, you know, some car manufacturers, they even go for smaller instrument cluster. For example, um, uh, I saw the Lotus Eltre. <clears throat> that one has such a small, slick one. And also... Volkswagen ID7, <clears throat> also a much smaller instrument cluster, but then they have, of course, they try to put everything in the, in the head-up display, and then Tesla doesn't have head-up display. But back to my point is that as long as you have stuff here, then you don't need to have much here, and you can actually save parts and weight and complexity, cable, just have it one big screen. You know, and this one actually, I think it's actually slightly bigger than the model. Right now, like, this usually happens that I tend to not blink at all because it's just too complicated. I'm, my brain is, if I'm talking to my wife or doing something, I'm, my, my brain, my CPU power is already at 100%. I only have one thread. I don't have a, a dual core CPU. So I can simply not do too much and then I end up not blinking and then I end up not uh, driving optimally compared, I mean, versus other uh, cars on the road. As if a normal operation works great, I just, uh, yeah, you get used to how to, I just get used to, like, it seems like my arms, my hands, they have a different motion versus uh, a regular wheel, because regular wheel, you can just grab it, whatever, and it, you will always find something there but with a yoke it, it just it's just a little bit different you have to get used to this so you see uh, no i no, no, didn't meet it but i just do it like this yeah and then let me park next to uh, one of the cars there okay and then if i want to you see if i want to blink um well uh, if i want to blink you you want to blink there right if you want to go there uh, unless you don't care so i have to do it like i can straighten out the wheel and then blink but in this, in many situations if i had a round steering wheel i would just you do this right but here i have to do wait which side is it no, no, okay okay it just happened to hit the right one okay and then this is also clumsy i, I still don't like this motion here um that you have to go let me just straighten out things here that this one goes forward and this one goes backwards because for the last two months now i've been driving so many cars the fat e-tron you know how it works in the fat e-tron you have a gear stock here and then you push it this direction to go forward and this direction to go backwards and it's the opposite of here and same with mercedes they have a stock here you go here forward here backwards uh, Lots of other cars work just like that. And then for some reason, Tesla, even Tesla works. Like that. The Tesla with stocks, same thing there. But then suddenly I have to go this one opposite for four. Right? So Tesla should really at least uh, give you an option to reverse the direction for people who are more used to other cars. Yeah. So it's just the way, I mean, whatever, right? Okay, okay, I'm nitpicking. Okay. So let's see, let's see now. Okay, now I'm going to try to do this quick. And wait, I forgot to blink. Okay, uh, my bad. Okay, you see, trying to get in there. And you can see that, yeah, I have fairly good wheel movements uh, to, yeah, do stuff, right? Okay, that worked great. Okay, park. 
And then let me see now. Tap to activate drive. Will it figure out? Okay, I want to go forward. Okay, so it figured out that one, right? And then I'll show you that if I, for example, park against the wall, then it should figure out that I want to back up, right? This is the whole alien technology. Okay, park. Okay, tap to activate drive. Eh, fail, it wants to go forward. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well. Elon Musk has been too busy trying to get to Mars. Okay, anyway, so what about the situation where I want to parallel park? That one requires more action, right? Typical scenario, right? Very typical scenario. You want to park between a, a, a container and a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> you find that every day. Okay, I come here, right? And then you see now that steering wheel is even upside down, kind of. And then I have to blink the right way. There, okay. Because okay, so I blink. No, I should. Okay. Blink. And then typically I would just do this, but now I have to do this. Okay. And then I turn my wheel. Oh, okay, this, this might be easier said than done. Or easier done than said. Okay. And then we go in here. Oh. oh. Okay, okay, that was actually not too bad. Yeah, yeah, we managed to park. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and now this, I find myself doing this all the time. Uh, okay, we, okay, we're done, we're done. And then park. And then we're gonna go forward. Tap to activate reverse this time. It's like, yeah, the magic box. What do you get today? Well, it wants to reverse, okay, it wants to reverse. Will it be smart enough to figure out that I want to reverse and then stop? What about now? Tap to activate drive. Uh, like a ninja. Yeah. So, yeah. So now you guys have seen it. With the yoke, uh, the, uh, where I struggle the most is at uh, parking lots and in roundabouts with the yoke. And then I enjoy the yoke when I'm on the motorway and just on yeah straight roads or even A roads, B road, Bundesstrasse, then it works great with uh, the yoke. So now let's jump into the, the Ioni 6 and see how it can handle it. Okay, and in the Ioni 6, uh, let me see, we have to go to settings, a vehicle, speed limit, off. Okay, all is good. Okay, come on, wait. Okay, wait for the lag. Wait, did I press map? Okay, we're good. All right, let's see. Off we go, you see? Now we have a gear shifter here, but actually here we twist this direction to go forward and then this direction to go backwards. So yeah, that is a bit different. All right, let's go. But you see, we have a round steering wheel. Let me just check my, uh, uh, okay, let's slow down a bit. Check the exposure. Yeah, I think that looks good. Well, actually, maybe I can just turn off this one and it should still, now you see, I think that's too dark. Yeah, let's go for it, okay. We have a round steering wheel. Hallelujah. I turn left, I make the turn, and then I turn right, I mean, uh, the right uh, turn steering wheel. You see how smooth it was. We actually have a round steering wheel. And we have a blinker stock that stays on the same position, regardless of a steering wheel. Huh? What kind of alien technology is this? Well, actually, it's not, uh, yeah. So, this works so much better. And you know, I mentioned that, yeah, within the two month span, ever since I used the yoke, I've also been using other cars, but also I've been using the yoke in between them. And then every time I get into another car with conventional wheel and conventional uh, uh, again, um, stocks, it works so much better. It, it just, it's just, what was it? It's just heaven, but it's actually, this is the way it works for all other cars. Even the Model 3 works like this and Model Y works like this. It's just, the, the, the more expensive ones with the yokes that works so weird. So, yeah, let me show again here. Okay, we're just gonna drive the same uh, route, kind of, like we did uh, previously. Okay, that guy wants to let us in. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so you see here, 
we go here, left, okay, and um, you just, this is again muscle memory. You're used to that. You just use your index finger or long finger here, right? The middle finger rather, I mean, uh, to change lane. While, while you have your steer, I mean, while you're on the steering wheel, you just tap it here to use the turn signal. So I don't want to turn yet. Here, I want to turn, turn signal, and then go for it. You see, it, it's just brilliant. It is brilliant. <laughs> and then, okay, you see how easy it is? You turn, tap there, I mean, do I need to explain how this stuff works? You know how this works. And see here, when you're doing a turn, I can just grab any point on the steering wheel because it doesn't ch change shape. That's the whole point of the wheel, right? You can imagine if we had yoke wheel on the on the wheels to drive the wheel. <laughs> and that's kind of how it would be, right? So it's better. It's, the ride will be smoother if you have round wheels, huh? Right? Okay, but now, now that we're on the motorway, then I can use the H HDA, uh, okay. Turn signal again, no big deal. I can handle this just fine. Okay, uh, just increase my speed a bit. And when we're on the motorway, I can see the instrument cluster just fine. <laughs> I mean, do I need to have a yoke in order to see the information here? No, I can see just fine here. Keep your hands on the steering wheel, the trip meter, the speed. Uh, I don't know how it is with other people. Maybe they have the, what the heck, man? Uh -oh. What's up with people driving here today? Maybe they have the steering wheel like this. Okay, then you can't see it, but should you have the steering wheel like that? Or too high? I'm not sure, but normally when I have my steer uh, the steering wheel in the position you want to have it, you're supposed to have 90 degree angle here uh, and have it fairly close. Like, I think the way I just adjusted now is, is the correct way. Uh, you shouldn't have it too far away. You shouldn't stretch your elbows like this and you shouldn't have it like this. So it, for, I guess around 99% of the cars I test, I can see the instrument, uh, instrument cluster just fine. I think there were, okay, maybe a few cars. I wonder if it was the Porsche Taycan. Maybe that one didn't have that big steering wheel and it had uh, a very big uh, instrument cluster. So uh, in that case, sometimes I had to move my head a little bit like this to be able to see everything on the Taycan, the Porsche yeah, uh, screen. But I guess that's like a corner case. So yeah, that is my uh, two cents or five cents or whatever about the yoke wheel. And um, yeah, so um, uh, I don't know if I need to summarize everything, but yeah, park and the, oh, it's just work great. So there you have it. Um, if I can choose, how do you fix the Tesla Model S and X? You bring back the regular steering wheel and you bring back the stocks, then it would be good. Yeah, so now we can discuss in the comment section. <laughs> so that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.